Alright, so for this problem we're trying to find the maximum load P that can be applied to this system. So we're going to go ahead and start by writing out everything that we know in this case. So we are given that E is equal to 200 gigapascals. We are also told that the diameter of the cable is 4 millimeters. We are told that the maximum stress in the cable must not exceed 190 megapascals. And we are told that the elongation of the cable must not exceed 5 millimeters, so that's going to be the deformation. And then now we just need to find the maximum load P that can be applied. So we're going to have to use a lot of different formulas here. We're going to have to use the uh, stress formula and the deformation formula, but both of these have the area in them. And we currently do not know the area, so let's go ahead and start off by finding the area. And the area is just going to be pi over 4 d squared. And in this case, d is equal to 4 millimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and change that to meters, which is 0 0.004 meters. And that gives us an area of 12.566 times 10 to the negative sixth meters squared. So that's our area for this problem. Um, and then currently right now, there's not a whole lot we can do. We need to see how all the forces in this system interact. Um, we're gonna have a tension force in this cable that is pulling um, to the bottom right on this beam here. So the, the wisest thing to do in this scenario would be to draw a free body diagram and see how all the forces are inter interacting in this case. So I'm going to set my coordinate axes like this, and I'm just going to be drawing the free body diagram of the beam because everything is acting on this beam. The force is acting on the beam, and the cable is acting on the beam. So we have a tension force in the cable BC acting right there. We have the force P acting to the left, and then there is a pin connection at A, so we're going to have an AX and an AY force at point A. And so really here what we're looking to do is solve um, and get a relationship between the force in BC and P. And so we really don't need to know anything about AX and AY. So if we take a moment about point A, take the sum of moments about point A, we'll get a system of equations that just is relating P and FBC. So let's go ahead and do that. So the sum of the moments about point A is equal to zero. And then um, we're going to have a distance of 3.5 meters from point A to where P is acting. And then we're going to have a distance of 6 meters from point A up to the top there where FBC goes through. And that is going to cause a negative moment. And then we need to get the um, just this uh, horizontal component of FBC because there is a horizontal component and there's also a vertical component of FBC. And the vertical component goes straight through point A, so the, line, uh, the distance, the perpendicular distance between point A and the line action of that vertical component is zero, so there's no moment from the vertical component. We're just worried about that horizontal component there. So we need to treat this like a triangle in order to solve for um, the um, part of this force FBC that is acting in the horizontal. So the easiest way to do that would just be to find the entire length of FBC, the entire length of this cable, LBC. And we can do that by taking the square root of the components. So this whole side here, we can just treat this basically like a triangle, basically. So this whole side here has a side length of 6. And then this is a side length of 4. And so we get that LBC is equal to 7.211 meters. That's our hypotenuse for this triangle. And so now what we can do is, since we just want the horizontal component of this force FBC, we can take FBC and multiply it by that horizontal component, which would be 4 over 7.211. And so now we have those two um, and we just need to solve for P in order to get a relationship between the two. And by doing that, we get that P is equal to 0 0.9509 times FBC. And so that's a relationship we're going to use later on. 
Um, and now what we can do is we can scroll down a little and we're going to go ahead and sol solve for the um, FBC based on the normal stress, the allowable normal stress that they told us, and then also based on the allowable elongation or deformation that they told us in the problem statement. So let's go ahead and start by looking at the normal stress, which they told us the maximum normal stress can be 190 megapascals. And I'm going to go ahead and change that to 190 times 10 to the sixth pascals, which is also equal to newtons over meter squared. And so remember that the normal stress formula is F over A. And so we can rearrange this to solve for F, which would just be the normal stress times A. And so we are told that the maximum normal stress is 190 times 10 to the sixth newtons over meter squared. Multiply that by the area, which we found up here to be 12.566 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared and we're going to get that the force which is the force in BC is equal to 2.388 times 10 to the third newtons and then we need to solve uh, based on the elongation or deformation case here and so for that we're going to use our deformation formula which is PL over AE and then solving for the force, I'm just going to change P to FBC because that's the force in this case, is equal to AE times the deformation over L. And so now we just need to plug in everything that we know. So our area, 12.566 times 10 to the negative sixth meter squared. They told us that E is 200 times 10 to the ninth pascals. And they told us that this maximum deformation is 5 millimeters, which is equal to 0 0.005 meters. And then we know that the total length of BC, we found that above when we looked at it like a triangle, we know that the total length of BC is 7.211 meters. And then based on this solving for FBC, we get that FBC is equal to 1.743 times 10 to the third newtons. And so now we have these two cases of FBC. So um, each of these values of FBC will cause failure. And so since we're looking for the maximum load, we're going to take the smallest value because the um, smaller value, so as soon as FBC hits 1.743 times 10 to the third newtons, that's going to cause failure in the case of deformation. Um, it won't cause anything in the case of the normal stress, but looking at deformation, that will cause failure. So that's the maximum value we can take in this scenario. So we're going to go ahead and take this value. And then now we just need to solve for P. Because remember, we found this relationship up here. If I scroll up, we found this relationship that P is equal to 0 0.9509 times FBC. And so if we figure this out now, 0 0.9509 times 1.743 times 10 to the third newtons, we get that P is equal to 1.657 times 10 to the third newtons. And that is going to be our answer, but they wanted it in kilonewtons, so P is equal to 1.66 kilonewtons. And that's going to be our final answer for this problem.